Hey everyone, it's Pastor Iggy and Zoe here for another story time. Do you know what week this is for all the Jews around the world? They'll be celebrating a festival. That's right, it's Passover. It's called the Feast of Freedom. And today we'll read the story of Passover to you, which is very important to us because Jesus is the Passover lamb. The Passover. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. Now we prepare the house. We sweep, we clean, we remove the bread and every last crumb. Now we set the setter table. There's a lot of food Mama. you're going to learn about. Mama. Now on the setter plate, we place the symbols of Passover. The beitza, a roasted egg, the karpas, which is parsley or celery, yeah. the karoset, uh, chopped apples and nuts, Oh, yeah. The maror, which is a bitter herb like ra horseradish, yeah. and the hazaret, like lettuce. And oh, all yeah. of these foods have okay. a symbolic meaning for what God has done to save the people. Abba, Abba, yes? Oh yes, I forgot the zorora, the roasted lamb bone. Now we begin by lighting the candles and saying the kiddush for Passover. At sundown, we light the candles, then the first glass of wine is poured. We lift our glasses and say the Kiddush in Hebrew. Baruch Ata Adonai, Aloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu Mitzvotav, Sivanu Ladlik Ner Shel Yom Tov. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to rekindle the holiday lights. The Kiddush cup. And Look at that. Many Jewish families will be at the Passover table celebrating what God has done. Lift their glasses. And so now we taste the parsley, which is parsley, potatoes, and celery. They are symbols of springtime, new life, promise, and hope. And then it was springtime in the ancient times. Oh, it's so pretty. It's a beautiful picture of spring. Now we dip the parsley in salt water. Like but that. salt for what? Water has salt, yeah, and we taste the bitter herbs. Why? We dip parsley in salt water to remind us of the sh tears shed during slavery. We eat bitter herbs because the Haggadah tells us the Egyptians made their lives bitter in all manners of labor in the fields. Back then, the Israelites labors at slaves in Pharaoh's fields. And there are many tears shed in those hard times. I know. Now, we eat a mixture of apples, nuts, raisins, and wine. This mixture reminds us of the mortar that our forefathers mixed as slaves. Its sweetness represents the promise of a better world. You see, back then the mortar was used to build these. The Israelites were forced to make is, mortar and bricks for the Pharaoh's this? pyramids. They're building pyramids using mortar as slaves. That's what they did. Now we tell the story of Moses and the burning bush. While tending sheep on Mount Horeb, Moses saw a bush on fire, but it did not turn to ash. From the burning bush, God's voice called to Moses. When everything is burned up, it becomes ash. But this did not turn to ash. I have seen the Israelites suffering, and I am ready to take them out of Egypt to a new land. God told Moses to return to Egypt with a message of freedom for the Israelites and to warn Pharaoh that if the slaves were not set free, God would visit plagues on the people of what Egypt. Is ash? ash is when you burn something up and it's all burned up, it becomes just little pieces of ash. But the bush did not burn. And back then, Pharaoh refused Moses' request to let the Israelites go. Now we drop 10 drops of wine on our plates. This wow. reminds us of the 10 plagues that God inflicted upon the Egyptians. The plague of the blood, the boils, frogs, vermin, beasts, cattle disease, hail, locusts, darkness, and finally striking the firstborn. We read about it in the book of Exodus. Because back then, God delivered the plagues upon the land, like sending all these insects and bugs upon the land to eat the crops, because they did not listen and would not let the people go. They would not let the slaves go out of Egypt. Why? They did not want to let them go, and so God was sending his judgment on them. Now we hold up the roasted lamb bone. This reminds us that before the tenth plague, God told the Israelites to mark their doorways with the blood of a lamb, so that the angel of death would know to spare their firstborn children. 
Then the angel of death passed over the homes of the Israelites. You see, all of their doors are marked with the blood of the Lamb. So they would be passed over and delivered. And now we eat only unleavened bread. This is the matzah bread. This reminds us of what Pharaoh said, I will, not, I will allow your people to leave Egypt, but you must go quickly. The Haggadah tells us, the Israels baked their bread in haste, for they could not tarry. That means the bread did not have time to rise, so it was flat bread. But Pharaoh broke his promise. Then the Egyptians chased the Israelites through the desert to the sea. So they had to move quickly. No time to bake nice breads. They had to bring flat bread and just go, go, go. Now we raise our cups and read from the Haggadah. We praise Adonai our God because the Lord caused the waters to be divided and the Israelites passed over to safety. Then the water closed upon the Egyptians with their chariots of war. Thus the children of Israel became free. Then the Red Sea parted and the Israelites escaped their pursuers. Yay! Yay! Freedom! This is the Feast of Freedom. And now we hold up a roasted egg, a symbol of life. After the escape from Egypt, the Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years, then came into their promised land. They grew in numbers and flourished. After many, many years, they built the temple in Jerusalem. To the temple, they brought festival offerings and thanksgiving for the fertility of their fields and flocks. The egg recalls such offerings. Mama. And then the Israelites brought offering to the temple in Jerusalem. This is where they came to give thanks to God and to worship in Jerusalem. Ba -ba. And now we open the door for Elijah. During the Seder, we drink four cups of wine or grape juice. But one special cup is filled for the prophet Elijah. At the end of the Seder, we open the door to welcome Elijah to the table and to drink his cup of wine. We wait for the time when he will announce peace for everyone. And now we end the Seder. The children find the afikoman, a wrapped piece of matzo, hidden at the start of the seder. One of the special matzo is found. It is broken into pieces and shared with everyone at the table, so that the last taste of the meal continues to remind us of the Israelites' liberation. We sing songs to thank God for our freedom and end by saying, next year in Jerusalem, which expresses the hope that all people all over the world will be free. And that is the Passover. And Elijah has already come as John the Baptist, preparing the way for Jesus. And Jesus is the Passover lamb, dying for our sins to set us free. So that's Passover. Bye-bye, everyone.